Hello and welcome you all for today's lecture. Uh, I hope you got the chance to go through what we discussed last time. After we had uh, looked at the uh, recap of the Sharpless epoxidation, uh, we looked at the uh, how normal olefins which do not have an allylic alcohol or any hydroxy group in the vicinity of the double bond. Uh, simple olefins, how can they be epoxidized using a uh, saline complex based uh, metal uh, oxo complexes. And uh, we initially looked at how the C2 symmetry based uh, uh, 1, 2 diamines can be prepared and also how uh, we can get the aldehydes, especially the salicylaldehyde which we discussed. Uh, and uh, they are not easy to prepare and therefore we looked at the uh, some method uh, for making and we need substituent here and a substituent here. That means a substituent ortho to the hydroxy group and para to the hydroxy group is that what is required. And uh, of course uh, we used two different types of uh, amines and uh, one of them was uh, of this kind uh, where of course we had the C2 symmetry based amine and the other one was with the cyclic system and this is how these two amines were taken up and of course we try to look at how we can resolve them or how we can get them optically pure and in a C2 symmetric fashion. So what we looked at it is just one example is shown here is uh, with this 1,2 uh, uh, diphenyl one to di amino uh, ethane type of C2 symmetry based uh, amine uh, leads to this complex and the uh, cyclohexane based uh, one to di amine leads to this particular manganese oxo complex. And we looked at how the epoxidation prevents the uh, particular uh, phenyl group uh, allows uh, blocking up of the olefin approaching from this side. It also blocks the approach from this side here. It also blocks from this side where the tertiary butyl group blocks and eventually what is uh, allowed is that you have an RL group on this side and RS group this side, the large group on the other side and the small group towards the lower side and that allows epoxidation to take place where this phenyl group does not come into the way and therefore the epoxidation occurs. Whereas with the cyclohexyl amine case, we very clearly saw that how this uh, actually oriented hydrogen blocks the um, uh, orientation of the large group uh, onto this side. That means if we have to epoxidize, uh, the olefin has to be oriented in this fashion. Um, of course, we discussed that this side, this side and this side is blocked because of the tertiary butyl groups from all the three sides. And this is the only side where the olefin can approach and this is the hydrogen which uh, stops according to the Jacobson's uh, uh, hypothesis. On the other hand, uh, the same uh, molecule can approach the uh, uh, oxo complex uh, according to Katsuki, but then uh, he invokes the uh, pi pi interaction, but the result is the same as we discussed. So we saw how the uh, these epoxidations take place, which are not dependent on the uh, uh, requirement that the there should be a hydroxy group in the vicinity of the uh, olefin, and therefore it is a very 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 important reaction. Now we look at the condensation of. Um, aromatic aldehyde that is salicylaldehyde derivatives with uh, C2 symmetry base amines like these two to form the corresponding saline complexes in presence of manganese triacetate. In the preparation of these uh, saline complexes we have a choice uh, where we can either have uh, PF6 
Cl or acetate ions as the counter ion, which also act as ligands. Now, what happens in these reactions that uh, it has been found that the salicylaldehyde derivatives are not generally very easy to prepare, as we have seen uh, in the preparation of uh, one of them, where it was relatively difficult to get that particular salicylaldehyde derivative, which is this one. Now, uh, iodosobenzene is also not found to be a practical source of oxygen because it leads to the formation of iodobenzene as a side product which needs to be removed by a chromatographic means because it cannot be removed by simple washing with water. Instead of iodosobenzene, uh, people prefer to use sodium hypochlorite or DMDO because the byproducts that are formed are easily uh, washable by water. In addition to that, it has also been found that additives such as amine and oxides like N-methyl morpherine oxide like this NMO or a poor phenyl pyridine and oxide BPMO are uh, used and uh, they are found to be uh, enhancing the rate, uh, increase the yield and also the enantial selectivity. They act as actual co-ligands and also stabilize the uh, manganese 5 oxo complex which is uh, obtained by the oxidation of these manganese 3 uh, cell and complexes. It is also found that electron donating groups at the para position of the aromatic system stabilize the manganese 5 oxo complexes and thus the rate of oxygen transfer from that manganese oxo complex uh, decreases which implies late transition state uh, that increases the alkene interaction with cell and ligand being more important. Now we look at uh, how the uh, aldehyde can also be uh, introduced onto the aromatic system in a, by using another reaction where a paraformaldehyde is taken. This is paraformaldehyde basically it is a polymer of uh, formaldehyde that is how it looks like you have a paraformaldehyde which in the presence of acid uh, would decompose. So, so you, you can start with a simple phenol and you can introduce the tertiary butyl group here like this, uh, but of course we can here have any other group also. So in any case that is not so important, the important point is that you have a hydroxy group which is what allows the introduction of the aldehyde group onto the ortho position. So once we have introduced the tertiary butyl group then form paraformaldehyde is reacted with it in the presence of uh, Mg plus plus that is Mg plus 2 either as magnesium chloride or this type of magnesium salt uh, in the presence of uh, base like triethylamine. So what is happening is that uh, this uh, uh, polymeric formaldehyde uh, decomposes in the presence of acid to form monomeric formaldehyde. And then the uh, protonation or say you have a Lewis acid in the, in the form of magnesium chloride for example here something like this uh, that allows uh, delta positive to form here and delta negative to form here. And then of course we can expect something like this to happen to form this intermediate. And then this intermediate then uh, is uh, allowed to interact with the triethylamine. And then of course we can expect that something of this kind will happen and of course we can get uh, the aromatic system becoming like this. Now what we have done in the process is uh, we have introduced here uh, this group uh, adjacent to the alpha position of the hydroxy that means ortho position. And now what can happen is uh, that this particular bond can break and we can anticipate that there is a hydride transfer to this and uh, we can get the uh, CH3O- coming out and MgCl plus coming out of course will eventually come out and then we get this uh, hydroxy group attached. That means this CH2O MgCl has now become the, the um, Formal, formal group and which upon acidification gives the corresponding aldehyde. So this is how 
a phenol can be converted to the corresponding ortho uh, formyl uh, phenol or salicylaldehyde. So, if we take any derivative of uh, phenol uh, of having a substituents at ortho and para position and one vacant uh, position here, then of course we can carry out such a reaction to form the corresponding uh, formyl group onto the vacant ortho position here. So, we can not only have simple salicylaldehyde, but many substituted salicylaldehydes as we have seen it here. So, this is how the uh, mechanism of the uh, introduction of the formyl group at the ortho position of the phenol occurs. Now, what are the examples that we can look at the uh, Jacobson Katsuki based uh, reaction that is if we take uh, uh, an olefin of this kind that gives the epoxide that is formed on, on this using this uh, oxo complex. And uh, as one can anticipate that uh, this is sterically hindered position because of the two uh, geminal dimethyl groups and therefore the opening occurs from this side and the nucleophile of from here uh, with carbon nitrogen bond is formed here on the from the alpha side because the epoxide is beta and therefore such a product is formed. So, we can have a uh, regio and stereo selective uh, opening of the epoxide and lead to now as you can see there are two asymmetric centers with two different functional groups attached to it. Now, if we take uh, uh, an, an alpha beta unsaturated ester of this kind which has a phenyl group on, on one hand and ester group on the other hand, uh, other side of it and then we have a cis double bond and if we react the same with the same catalyst and the same oxo complex as is here and considering that the ester group is, is smaller compared to a large phenyl group then of course epoxidation would occur the same way as we discussed earlier in the case of uh, 2 methylstyrene uh, and of course uh, when this uh, epoxide is formed the uh, ammonia attacks onto this particular carbon atom this goes off because we have we can anticipate that the carbon oxygen bond can break and, and developing a positive charge at the benzylic position. So, you can have expect a slightly delta positive here under these conditions where the amine attacks and we get this particular amino alcohol. And uh, then of course, we can expect that uh, essentially we can convert that into this particular kind of orientation of the um, amino alcohol or the alpha hydroxy ester. And uh, what is found that if uh, we take uh, uh, isopropyl ester that seems to have uh, get a different uh, epoxide like for example, if we have a CO2 IPR that is isopropyl group then it appears that this particular group uh, seems to be acting as a larger than aryl group here and then we get this epoxide when we take uh, this uh, particular uh, olefin which is cis uh, double bond alpha beta unsaturated ester and that gives this epoxide which has been converted into an hypertensive uh, uh, agent uh, and anti-hypertensive agent actually it should not be an hypertensive agent it is an anti-hypertensive agent. So, diltiazem. So, this is the uh, structure of that where this hydroxy group uh, is of course coming up there and this particular aryl group is also coming up from this epoxide. So, it is a long synthesis that we will not go through it, but then the idea is that the simple epoxide which can be easily made in optically pure form as you can see is like 96 percent enantiomerically pure and then of course, you can convert it into the important anti hypertensive uh, agent. Apart from cis disubstituted olefins, uh, even tri substituted olefins have been found to give uh, high enantio selectivity in the epoxidation cases. Uh, we can also carry out um, 
kinetic resolution uh, using these catalysts that have been found. For example, if we start here uh, as an asymmetric center and we begin with a racemic molecule that means we do not have an optically pure molecule and then we take uh, a catalyst which is RR oriented one of the uh, manganese 3 complex and react with the uh, oxidizing agents such as metachlorpyrbenzoic acid and what is found which is mentioned here in the Journal of Practical Chemistry in 1999 that one of the two uh, enantiomers gets epoxidized and the other one which is what they wanted were to use uh, for something else which gets un, uh, unepoxidized and therefore resolved. So this is a kinetic resolution in terms of which olefin gets epoxidized faster and which one does not and therefore we can resolve it. But this kind of uh, saline complex also has been uh, used as a more or less like a Lewis acid catalyst which is chiral uh, like for example if we start with uh, this kind of racemic epoxide, epoxide a simple a small uh, molecular weight uh, epoxide like this and uh, if we use this catalytic amount of the uh, manganese 3 complex and intention is not to do epoxidation because there is no olefin, uh, epoxidation does not occur and therefore what happens is that the catalyst behaves more like a Lewis acid and from the racemic uh, epoxide when the Lewis acid attaches to it the water which is present in the medium and that is the reason why we take low molecular weight so that uh, molecule is somewhat uh, soluble in water and one of them gets uh, opened uh, at this particular position and the other one remains unopened. So the rate of reaction of the rate of opening of the epoxide is different for two different enantiomers of the same epoxide. So that also allows uh, as a result you can get this epoxide here or you can get the diol having a hydroxy group here which is determined from the epoxide that has been utilized for this purpose. And this has been published in 1997 in science. Now what exactly is the mechanism of this reaction? A lot of work has been done in this regard and we can summarize uh, the observations and also the suggestions. Uh, it has been observed that cis 12 disubstituted alkenes lead to the formation of cis epoxides that means there is a cis selectivity in these cases. This suggests that the reaction may proceed via a 2 plus 1 concerted pathway like this for example if this olefin comes in contact with this manganese 5 oxo complex then there is a possibility of a 2 plus 1 cycloaddition leading to this particular transition state which then releases the cis epoxide and of course manganese 3 complex for further oxidation. Alternatively what they have suggested that it, the reaction might proceed via metalla oxytane intermediate through 2 plus 2 pathway. For example this uh, manganese 5 oxo complex when it comes in contact with this uh, cis uh, olefin then we can expect that 2 plus 2 cycloaddition occurs to form this mangana oxytane intermediate which if it collapses without any uh, intermediate to be formed then of course we can get the cis epoxide. On the other hand what has also been found that in conjugated alkenes a form mixture of cis and trans epoxide is uh, formed and that suggests the possibility of a radical pathway and that has been proposed in this particular uh, mangana oxytane type of uh, pathway that if this particular carbon manganese bond cleaves homolytically then of course we can get a radical uh, at this particular carbon atom and then that uh, will allow a cc bond rotation of uh, here and eventually lead to the formation of the trans epoxide. Of course it can also lead to the formation of cis epoxide. So a mixture of cis and trans epoxide can form. Now the uh, cis and trans ratio has also been found to be dependent on the oxidant additive 
and the catalyst in some cases. So these are the observations and these are the suggestions. So there's a possibility of this kind of uh, mechanism uh, that may be operating and therefore it is relatively um, acceptable to, to uh, invoke such a mechanism. Now this is an example in which uh, uh, what is seen that uh, as I mentioned that the reaction depends upon oxidant, additive and uh, the catalyst that is used. Uh, so if we use SS catalyst and you use sodium hypochlorite what is found is that if we start with this olefin we get 100% cis olefin epoxidation does not uh, make any change uh, in terms of uh, stereochemistry. In a similar fashion this gives you 100% cis and in this case uh, it also gives 100% cis. But when you use uh, iodoso benzene in uh, both the cases then of course what is found is that we get 57% cis product and 43% is ring open product. The ring open product means this uh, uh, cyclopropane gets opened. And in a similar fashion here 83 percent and 17 percent is cyclopropane ring open product. So how is it expected that the cyclopropane ring will open? Uh, it is only possible if uh, there, is a, there is a possibility of uh, uh, cyclopropane opening through a radical intermediate. So we can expect supposing if this is what is the case then we if we put it here phenyl group here then this intermediate has to come somehow of this kind of oxidation would uh, uh, allow uh, the radical to form in this fashion. So we can expect the oxygen to come here and manganese to come in here and, and then rest of the things but then radical has to be here which allows the opening of the uh, cyclopropane to take place. So this is what is um, found in the case of uh, phenyl iodoso benzene but that does not happen in the case of sodium hypochlorite. So actually the change of oxidant leads to ring open products but the epoxide is still cis as you can see that the epoxide is still cis. So it means that there is a possibility of the reaction proceeding via metallooxetane uh, intermediate and then opens up. Uh, to form the uh, ring open product via radical means or it closes uh, immediately without isomerization to form the cis epoxide. So this is what is uh, mentioned in this uh, particular paper that you can read it. Now we start uh, another topic which is uh, asymmetric uh, dihydroxylation. Uh, originally the uh, dihydroxylation of an olefin for example, if we start with an olefin and we can get the corresponding diol which is a cis diol which is 1 to cis diol and this kind of 1 to cis diol has been uh, found uh, by uh, reacting olefins with osmium tetroxide and uh, what is found that reaction uh, proceeds very likely through such kind of uh, osmium intermediate. Uh, which can be reduced and uh, we can get the corresponding diol. The reduction can be done with hydrogen sulphide or sodium sulphide and of course we can get the corresponding diol. Originally uh, osmium tetroxide was used uh, in a stoichiometric fashion and uh, but then it was a very reliable dihydroxylation that even tetra substituted olefins react readily. That means the reactivity of the osmium tetroxide is very high. Uh, then it was also found uh, which is a very important observation that the addition of amines or pyridines uh, increase the rate probably uh, forming uh, such an electron rich complex as it is here. As you can see that the osmium tetroxide here is an electron deficient in terms of oxygen um, being there as oxygen double bond O, 4 of them and therefore this particular osmium atom is uh, very electrophilic and therefore any nitrogen would uh, 
prefer to bind it very easily and therefore such a intermediate can allow. When such a reaction happens then of course we now we have a leaving group here at the same time we have a nucleophilic oxygen here and of course we have three of the osmium oxygen double bond which are electrophilically oriented and therefore you know epox this diode oscillation occurs very fast. And uh, the original diode oscillation reaction uh, using stoichiometric amount of osmium tetroxide uh, as I have mentioned uh, above is that it is very reliable and useful but uh, it is expensive. And since the osmium tetroxide is uh, volatile and it is also extremely toxic. So uh, even uh, to do a reaction on a small scale uh, people were not particularly very comfortable with it and it was not a convenient proposition to do the reaction at um, a small scale involving uh, the use of osmium tetroxide in a stoichiometric fashion. Uh, however, uh, since there was this uh, uh, very important observation that any kind of double bonds can react and therefore uh, there was a need uh, to improvise this particular procedure as uh, this proves, proves to be a very advantageous situation that any kind of double bonds can react. Uh, and therefore over the years the diode oscillation procedure has been modified to operate uh, catalytically and uh, more rapidly and giving better yield. That means in terms of osmium if the osmium tetroxide could be made uh, catalytic uh, in terms of its usage then the reaction is uh, definitely going to be very useful. And therefore because of the expensive nature, toxic nature uh, the co-oxidants were used and one of the co-oxidant was this sodium chlorate. Uh, osmium tetroxide and the other one was osmium tetroxide and hydrogen peroxide which is known as Millas reagent. But in these cases over oxidation occurs and um, the aldehyde or the ketone uh, are formed and therefore it was not a very uh, convenient method for making uh, use of these kinds of oxidants. But then there have been uh, many other modifications which uh, are reported in the literature and eventually the osmium tetroxide was made to be used in a catalytic fashion and uh, uh, we will discuss the um, remaining part of the osmium tetroxide based diode oxalation in the next class. Uh, till then you can go through what I have mentioned today and then see you next time till then bye and thank you.